All right. Welcome to another episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy XI podcast, it seems. <laughs> I am your host, Caleb. I am your host, Joe, and we have with us some Limit Break radio hosts. Is that correct? I, I think so, yeah. Okay. I think so. Last time I checked. All right. Can we go around and introduce yourselves to Nero? Uh, hi, I'm Aniro. I've been here before. Uh, I am one of the hosts of Limit Break Radio. We're a Final Fantasy 14 talk show and podcast that you can find at twitch.tv slash Limit Break Radio. Also, LimitBreakRadio.com for a full archive. We didn't always used to be an FF14 show. We started as a Final Fantasy 11 show, and uh, we still have an archive of those shows that started all the way back in uh, 2006. So uh, we have the distinction of being a 10 year running podcast. Like that's that's not a title that many people have. So uh, yeah, that's uh, the, and and I host it, and people call me an asshole. So hi, <laughs> that welcome. Was, that was the least humble of humble brags. Uh, yeah, hmm, hmm. All right, just we- bragging. We also have with us uh, Juxtaposition, is that correct? Yep, Juxtaposition, that's me. How's everyone doing? I am uh, I'm actually the funny part of LBR, so without me, the show would be really, really terrible. I know how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> Connect. And Escalia. How's it going? I'm Escalia Riamasa. I am the attractive part of Limit Break Radio. <laughs> Wait a second. I feel you. What? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Keep going, twice. All right, and we got Nika with us. Yes, hi, I'm Nika Coyote, and I'm the token female of this podcast. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. You know, we got a lot of shit for not having one of those at one point in time. There was like a two-week period where it came up like six fucking times, and they're like, how come you guys don't have a, a female host? I was like, dude, I don't fucking know any girls that play Final Fantasy. But apparently you guys got the uh There are plenty of them. The one. Yeah, but where are they? Not here. <laughs> this is Utah. There's not even people, let alone females. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought this was a respectable podcast. I thought there would be another woman on the show, so I'm going <laughs> to Thank you. Guys. Thank you, Jack. I'm going to have to sign off. Here. I was talking about Ascalia. <laughs> 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 Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh Let me boy. get my makeup on. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. All right, Troyes, go ahead. Uh, so, Final Fantasy XI, I mean, we've gone through and we've played all of the expansion content. We've beaten everything there is to offer um, as far as uh, the expansions, the main storyline, the Bastok quest line is what we ended up doing, which is basically the same for each nation, as far as I can tell. And... Our experience with Final Fantasy XI is the extremely nerfed version of it where it takes like no time to do anything. So we have no idea what hell you guys were put through back in 2006 when you started this fucking thing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's kind of where I want to start. Um, if, uh, what do you guys, what was the, what was the game like before, uh, before so, our time? So, so you're, you're asking us to relive a traumatic experience, yeah. just so you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, if there, if there are tears at any point or, uh, you know, flashbacks, it's okay. Just put a belt in my mouth and, you know, I'll get through it. Yeah, don't, don't uh, choke on your tongue now. Yeah, right, exactly. Uh, FF, uh, FF11, uh, back in the day, uh, when I started, it was a game that you... It, it actively did not want you to play it, and it was like, it was obvious from the play online software that it was like, we're going to put as many, as many technical, like, technical uh, 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 roadblocks as we can between you and actually being able to play the game. So, like, figuring out how to connect to the game was the first challenge, which that took sometimes three fucking days. And, uh, you know, once you did get connected and once you did get uh, thrown into the world, it was uh, it was huge. It was massive. Nobody told you anything. No NPCs told you anything. They didn't. They gave you one place to go. And then when you went there, they gave you 300 gil. And they were like, see you later, motherfucker. Bye. Like, good luck. Have fun. And and nothing was explained. There was nothing that like it gave you no direction. It was just like, 
Wow! Here, go, go, enjoy, enjoy the, uh, enjoy the world. And there was there was a, a lot of freedom in that. Actually, uh, there was uh, there was it, it, it like made the world feel bigger than just you. And I think that that is something that MMOs, you know, now this, the narrative can be so well crafted that you can feel like the savior of everything. And, and when you got to the end of a, the narrative arc of a patch or an expansion, you know, you did, you know, you did feel like you saved the world from something huge and cosmic, but it took so long to get there. And it felt like such a journey getting there that, you know, uh, I, I feel like that was one of the things that really made that game special is because it, you, you really had to work for each one of those, uh, each one of those rewards. I would yeah, argue it's I mean, a lot like final fantasy one where it just kind of throws you out in the middle of nowhere yeah. and then you have to go to the next thing. But I, I would also argue that the game is still that way with new players. Yeah. You, there, there's still nothing that you can do except for like go online look at the FF11 wiki and right. in order to like figure out what the yeah. fuck to well, do and next. And that's oh, only no, you, you youngins listen here. All right. Oh. When we start when we start up we don't you know that lovely little tutorial set of quests that teach you how to get signet and teach you how to get your XP band. First of all, what was an XP no. band in 2004? <laughs> yeah. Those didn't exist. Definitely. Uh, it shows you how to use the auction house, shows you how to do a quest oh for Oh my gosh. No, those did not exist when we got into the game. And kind of like Nero said, it made it feel like it didn't matter that you were showing up in this world because at the time it didn't. Like, like you are, you're an adventurer. You're one of thousands of people in this sea of just adventurers coming to Van Deal, and you don't matter yet. And that made it feel all the more special later on when suddenly you are doing things that are important. Yeah, I mean, it feel you feel real accomplished when you finally figure out how to equip a fucking weapon in this game. Like I ran out into the world and I was like, God, I I can't do damage with my fists they said i had a sword i mean everything was so confusing when i first started that i mean i remember swearing after like the first week of playing that the auction house was just was just so confusing i was just never gonna use it like i told everyone i was like you know what i'm just not gonna use the auction house in this game it's, it's really confusing i think i'm just gonna buy my gear from the shops and it'll be fine right guys um, yeah, yeah. Even like the the home point, I didn't understand how home points worked, and I thought it was like a crystal that I could see, and I could pick <laughs> it up and put it where I want my home point to be. And so, <laughs> like, I was like yelling, I was like, "This game is so stupid! Why can't I put the home point where I want us to put it? I don't get it." And there was Fan- nothing to there was nothing to explain to you what the hell was going on. In Final Fantasy, Fantasy Eleven was my first MMO. Mine too. So the first time I walked out into the field, I killed. I, I got to like level four, and then I got killed by a rabbit, and I was super mad because I thought I didn't save, so I'd have to go back to level oh. one and start over. <laughs> Yes. Oh uh, I couldn't figure out what the fuck the menu key was for the first eight hours of the game. Like yeah. the what? What is it? The minus key? Yeah, it is. Fuck yeah. that shit. The the um the the way that the control scheme is laid out is so like unintuitive. Oh but God. once you get it, like yeah. once you get it, it's like it's like secretly brilliant. Like I don't I don't understand what it was, but there was like. There was like a, a a a point where every player like turned like they, they turned the corner on the controls and they were like oh, okay I get this like they finally figured out like and and it's sort of like riding a bike like you never really totally forget what you know what the menu commands and stuff are uh when you you know like I, I took like a four year break and just loaded it up one day and I was like oh I totally remember all of this. It's just the muscle memory in my right hand will n- I don't know that that'll ever go away. Just like isolation. Uh, little bet. Little bet. Uh but <laughs> yeah, it I mean it it was like I said, it was a it was a game that actively didn't want you to play it. Like some of the things that were in you know, some of the 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 asks that it made of of its player base was just ridiculous. And it was, you know, like 
a, a lot of it was, uh, you know, old, old school MMO design philosophy and, uh, you know, a little bit of cribbing off of uh, EverQuest, like uh, a lot of the NM structure and stuff like that, at least early on, was really heavily influenced by the first EverQuest. And that was an extremely time consuming game and not where you would be actively using your time but where you would kind of be passively sitting around waiting for things to happen and waiting for opportunities to happen. And while that slows down the pace of your game, it also does something to make the world feel again, like you're not special, like you're not, (laughs) you're not the center of its attention that it's got clocks and, and systems that will keep moving and keep going without you. And, you know, if you weren't there and, and, uh, Nidhogg popped, he would just be sitting there. You know what I mean? Like those kinds of things are, uh, it was really attractive about the world and it made it feel a lot more, fantasy ish. Uh, and, it, and in, in the end, I think it, it made it a little bit more engaging, but you, there is a huge trade off there where you get a lot of downtime, where you get a lot of really boring stuff, but in the end it somehow ends up like kind of coming back around to being really competitive and, and fun. There was, there was a, some amount of fun to be had in the frustration of it, you know? Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, it's uh, it's definitely a big... It's it's a very different game from 14. And like you said, it did piggyback off of EverQuest. We've heard that from a bunch of our uh, older, yeah. our elderly <laughs> listeners, I would say. We, we have one listener in particular who, when we started playing the game with him, kept on going, this is just like EverQuest. This is just like EverQuest. You guys don't mm-hmm. even know. This is just like EverQuest. Yeah, so EverQuest, in my yeah. mind, is like, fuck no, right? <laughs> like, that's not going to fucking happen. But, uh... Yeah, I mean it's it's crazy how uh, how different the MMO scene is and how crazy different 11 is from most Final Fantasies other than maybe the first couple. Were you guys Final Fantasy fans before you got into 11? Uh oh, or yeah. was oh, yeah. 11 kind of like your MMO introduction to Final Fantasy? Uh I was big into Final Fantasy before 11 was, but 11 was my first MMO. I didn't really know what MMOs were i just bought it because it was the next final fantasy game (laughs) and i was like oh i hear this one's online that's kind of cool so i remember like logging in and trying to figure out like which people were actually people and which people were npcs i was like wait that's a real person oh my god this is so cool like i really did not have a concept of mmo which is why i think at first when i look back on like when i first started i didn't feel like i was being tortured by playing this very very slow game but when i look back on it now like having played other mmos i'm like wow that game was like it, it didn't it's, it's weird to hear that the 14th community that complains and bitches so much especially when for newer players and how they've added all this new stuff whereas back in 11 that didn't exist and nobody cared so right i want to know uh was how okay so the game just puts you out in the middle of nowhere says fuck you figure it out how did you guys figure it out or did you God. do what we did which was find the wiki was or, there anything like that or did you look up slipknot no. tutorials and just like you know what i'm just fucking done i'm gonna end this no movie. no no <laughs> no it was it was so much more organic and cool than that because yeah when, when we started it w- there was really no wiki and what ended up pushing me through to the other side and actually like got me Uh, it it, like it got me enough skills to be able to get by in the world was literally talking to another person was actually like having someone who took the time to show me like the ins and outs of the game and teach me what macros were and like that was a really like valuable part of of the game and all and also really necessary like i i you know i i wasn't you know, I I wouldn't say I was necessarily shy, but I'm not also I'm also not the most outgoing person in the world either, you know, and especially at that time in my life, like, you know, it, there needed to be someone who pulled that out of me. And I, I do feel for some of the people who at the time, like that didn't happen for them. And so the world just felt huge and confusing and overwhelming. And that and I, I totally get like that was that's totally an easy thing thing to let happen with uh you know with ff11 
Um, but yeah, it was, it was actually like meeting people and getting into a party and a group for the first time and having things explained to me by another person, getting a link shell and having a link shell explain to me or answer questions. These were huge resources long before there was any, uh, FF 11 wiki. I, mean, I think I actually took way longer than the average person to level up simply because I didn't I didn't really even realize there was an end game to get to. I didn't really realize like, I was just kind of in the world like I was part of the world. I think I spent yeah. the first few months. I think I only got to level 12. And I think like I, I remember me and this other guy who was like level 15. He started claiming I have every map in the entire game and I can take you anywhere you want to go. And I was like, OK, I hear there's this place called Juno. Let's go find it. And he's like, OK. So we literally walked all the way from Bastok all the way to Juno yeah. as like level Ugh. 12. And I got there and it's like, okay, I've got a log. And he left me in Juno. I had no map. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I started just shouting at, you know, Juno is like a straight line, right? Like every single zone in Juno is a straight line. And I started screaming, where's the Mog house? I'm so lost, guys. Somebody help me find the Mog house. And I would just shout because I had no idea how to get out of Juno now that I was there. Because I had set my home point there, I think, and I was stuck. I'm like, uh, help me. And it really was about just finding the someone who was nice enough to help you as a new yeah. player and just uh, show you the world a little bit. I remember my first day in game and I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea. Like, like I thought I was going to have to go around the city doing quests or talking to people. I didn't realize that there was going to be a zone that I'd go out to and fight rabbits. I just thought like, okay, I'll just walk around the city and see what happens. And then I started seeing people with gear on. And that's when I realized, wait a minute, changing my equipment actually changes my character's appearance. That's really sweet. That doesn't happen in most Final Fantasy games. And then I just uh, eventually uh, ran into someone who had this really sweet looking beret on. And I'm like, oh, my God, I want that beret. How do I get one of those? And she, God bless her, rolled her eyes very hard, I'm sure, <laughs> walked over and bought me a bronze cap from an NPC and traded it to me after explaining to me how to trade. And then I got oh to put God. my level one bronze cap on, and I'm like, yes, I have reached end game. Oh, my God. <laughs> it, it, the, you know, that's that's actually really funny uh, because, yeah, like uh, when when I started FF11, I had no concept of like what happens when you get to the level cap. Like I just I there was there was none of that. You know, like I had played MMOs before. Uh, but most of my time was spent with Ultima Online, which is not really a level based system. It's more like a skill based system. And you you spend time investing in skills. And there was a little bit of that. So I could totally understand skilling up. You know what I mean? Like that was something that I could wrap my head around because I had been doing that for a really long time but the the leveling system like i i you know like i just didn't i didn't really have a, a concept of it i was just kind of enjoying the world for what it was and uh you know the the to to go back to your previous question you know i had been a fan of the final fantasy franchise before picking up final fantasy 11 uh but i had also developed a healthy uh, a, a healthy fascination in MMOs as well. So, you know, I was, I, you know, I was trying out different MMOs like EverQuest, like Horizons, like uh, Ultima Online. And then Final Fantasy XI came along. And I remember hearing about it for the first time. It was actually a friend of mine, uh, me and a friend of mine were playing uh, the PlayStation 1 version of Final Fantasy V. And that was one of the one of the games where you could play with like two controllers and one person would control half the party. The other person would control half the party. I never did figure and, out how to do that. <laughs> it, I know and, it's possible, and, but I could never figure it out. We, you know, we were having a really good like and I remember him telling me like, yeah, they're working on a new Final Fantasy where like everyone plays together online. And I was like trying to wrap my head around how you would have a party of people that you like how did how does online work in final fantasy and i just i could not conceive it and and then there was like a couple of years of downtime in between uh you know when i had heard that and when final fantasy 11 finally came out and when i saw it i was like i gotta get this i have to i've got to get it and uh I was not disappointed um i i really really enjoyed that game and you know, much uh, it, it, places where I would get stuck in other MMOs, uh, you know, for example, like I didn't really push past level 20 ish in EverQuest. 
uh, I was finding ways to be able to push through those kinds of roadblocks in FF11. And so that was the first game that I really, outside of Ultima Online, that I really played to like cap and did, you know, end game sorts of stuff for. Even in Ultima Online, I sort of found my own fun. I don't know that I ever did end game in Ultima Online because I could not tell you even to this day what end game in Ultima Online is is or looks like or what the fuck you know purpose it would serve uh but you know i i I found my own fun in you know like role playing and shit like that uh and uh and and yeah so uh to come over to ff11 and then to have a very a little bit more tightly structured of an end game was uh was kind of a revelation for me in online games Coming from uh, pre- playing prior Final Fantasies into Eleven, I remember the first thing that really jarred me and made me feel like, I don't know that this is actually a Final Fantasy game, is I at first I hated the idea of having to find someone to heal me and then depend on them to actually do it. So I remember saying to my friend, you know what, I'm just, you know what, no healers, let's just buy potions and we'll just, we'll yeah. just heal oh ourselves God. with potions. Because <laughs> it's Final Fantasy, we'll get some Phoenix Downs, we'll get some potions, it's going to be great. Of course. Well, there is no phoenix down in this game and potions are garbage <laughs> so that wasn't possible i remember being just immensely frustrated by that uh, i i, I kind of feel the same way at least we had the trust when we started yeah right? the trust system oh my oh, god, god. Fucking god. Life Easy mode. <laughs> yes. you didn't actually wait you didn't actually start until trust were already implemented right yeah. so we started <laughs> last year um because we were going through all the final fantasies the main series in a row and we decided to beat like the nation mission for Final Fantasy XI. Right, that's so where we ended. That took us like two months yeah. because we were getting used to the game and crap like that. And then for the last four months up until a few weeks ago, we've been playing Final Fantasy XI solidly, just trying to beat all the missions available in the game. Right. So to all say the, uh, that we, you know, beat it in all of its expansions for our podcast. Uh, and oh my god, the amount of time that that must have taken. Uh, Holy shit. It's just to us- get through the amount of cutscenes, because there are so many cutscenes. Oh, we fucking know. <laughs> Uh, and to address something you guys said earlier about the nation missions, all the nation missions are the same until you hit rank six. Then they all diverge off into their own storylines. Oh, OK. OK, That's good. Cool. I think we did one through ten the first time we played because we got to the end of six and we were like, dude, that was like fucking ten minutes. Let's <laughs> let's uh, punch through the last few. And it was good. Oh, yeah. Someone in the chat said Japanese midnight. Fuck Japanese midnight, by the way. That is fucking bullshit. That's like that's like 9 a.m. for us or some shit. I'm like, fuck. At you. least it, d- it does seem like they changed that. When I finished the Seekers of Adelin, they made it like the next game day. Yeah, yeah. Most of them are for so That most, still took forever. Yes. <laughs> when you would, you would complete a mission at like 1 a.m. game time and you're like, fuck. Yeah, I'm like, wait an entire guys, hour. I don't know if you guys have gotten to experience this yet, but back in the day, very rarely, but occasionally, we would get, wait until the next conquest tally. Oh, oh my god, god, I forgot about that. Oh, I, oh that yeah, was, next that was the worst. morning. Oh, uh, those were awful. Wow. But, like, that... but the thing is, is that back then, I don't really remember bitching about it. I was like, okay, I'll just go do other stuff in the meantime. <laughs> you we were didn't just... know any better, because we were dumb. <laughs> yeah, you were just so used to getting fucking beaten down by the game that you're like, fuck it, all right. Bye. But I mean, it did It <laughs> did make it feel like it was happening more in real time, at least, though. Like, it actually takes a week for certain things to happen in the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that but, that makes a lot of sense, especially with like um, in the context of cutscenes and storyline moving forward. Like sometimes, you know, these massive political movements that are happening, they don't happen in like two minutes. So it makes sense to make me wait to the next day. It just pisses me off when I. Oh, oh, it, it's yeah, it's it's always annoying. But then it's, when you realize that a game day is a real life hour, waiting a week is like I don't know, like oh, a few months in yeah. the game. So it's like, why are we really waiting that long? It takes a long time to craft that uh, that piece of relic, okay? Oh <laughs> Jesus Christ, the crafting, dude. Um, oh, man, there's some missions. I think it was Shantoto Ascension, and we hadn't been crafting because, you know, we have tunnel vision. We're like, let's beat this fucking thing. Yeah. Uh, and then we just got we got slammed by, I think, Shantoto Ascension. And yeah, they Shantoto were like, was Oh, no, now you have to us. learn how to craft, like, six different things. Yeah, and then also <laughs> the, the whole thing, it was like day one all over again. I'm sitting there like... Pulling up my menu, like, oh my god, I where do I craft? There's these pot things. Like, do I take it to these pots? <laughs> I walk over to the pot, and it's like, oh, synth, blah blah blah. And I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? I look online. I'm like, how the fuck do I craft in eleven? And the internet's like, crafting recipes. I'm like, fuck you. How do I get to it? 
<laughs> and then I pull uh, up well, the, the menu and I'm like, the oh, menu. there it is. <laughs> the simple answer is you don't craft an 11. It's a waste of time. Oh. <laughs> I mean, if you were a crafter, though, you had a lot of money. That's for oh, sure. my God. I mean, we had one guy. Because how many crafts could you get to 111? Like three? No. Like that? You one? Get, you could get any craft of 60, but you could only get 40 extra points beyond that. So okay, could so you could only get one to 100. Okay. Only one to 100 if you wanted to. Oh, my God. Okay, so I knew someone in my when I was doing all my hardcore endgame Link Shell stuff um, that had every craft at 100 amongst all of his mules. So oh my God. I'm not kidding. Every craft. So we just switch oh characters God. and he would make stuff for everyone. And he was <laughs> rich. He was like, you know, the FFXI AH website. I don't know if they don't know. What yeah, yeah. 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 We started, <laughs> oh, we yeah. Started and, and it would have player rankings, right? Mm. We had like the number one person across all servers. That was this guy. How wow. do you kill that? Which does <laughs> not live. Like, it was ridiculous. Like, holy you're yeah. dropping like 25 bucks a month on sub fees alone. Dumb, oh, right? No. But he was the number one person. And he was Japanese, but he was in like our link shell. I guess this was my older link shell, like my mid tier one I was in that had half American and half um, Japanese players. So that way, no matter what time Kings were up, we were always there. Yay. <laughs> um, yeah. So he, yeah, he was a Japanese player who spoke a little bit of English and would always pretend to be like really shy, but really wasn't. It was weird. Nice. But, yeah. yeah the- he was the best player. The real problem comes in when you have like items that you have to craft that are account locked, which uh, the Shantoto storyline has one in particular that you have to craft yourself. Fuck that. And shit. it was uh, it's scary like because the the item could just be gone. Like if you fuck up the craft, it's like just poof over. Right. And you got to go grab all the other elements to it. But thankfully, none of us fucked up and we uh Got it up to the recommended level, and it was no big deal. But uh, so oh, what, it was no big deal. Uh, it was the, no the, big. Uh, the you six know, hours. Yeah, that it took yo, to, fuck yeah. it. I, I wasn't gonna do anything that day anyway. You know, <laughs> Let I, me tell you guys a little story about an enemy <laughs> called Haku Taku. All right. Who uh, to make it, to spawn him? He he dropped an item called the Optical Hat, which gave you ten accuracy, and that. God, I like. I'm just realizing that they would have no idea about this shit. Yeah, yeah I, was I know. Bring, I was just gonna bring up how all of this stuff became rare X. And so, like, people stopped caring about camping it. I was going to bring up things like... Not only that, I mean, it's, it's, it's long outclassed, and yeah. I mean, not just that, but I mean, just like, like it was it was off the beaten path normally, you know what I mean? Like, there was so yeah. much in FF11 that you were never directed to, and that was almost like, like the pieces from it were critical and like re- like they were awesome they were top and, and, tier items top yeah. tier gear best no, slot no one explained that there was not a single no like, just, dialogue there was nothing, nothing. there was you literally would just stumble across this nm kill it find there was this awesome shit and spread the word that was oh it yeah but like yeah. it was craziest like and and also like the coolest environment to play an mmo like maybe that's part of it is that it, you know, like, yeah, the internet was such a thing, but like the, these, these organic, uh, uh, well, maybe they're, they're less organic now than I, as I think they are, but like, you know, you had these like community driven, uh, uh, it, you know, collective projects like the FF 11 wiki that, you know, really like, before this, before this era in gaming, like they didn't fucking exist. You had forums, maybe, maybe. Like, there were no official forums for FF11. It was no. whoever could grab the most audience. And it happened to be Blue Garter for a long time. Yep. Yeah. It, like, the shit was nuts. Like, it was just, it was a totally different era in gaming where, where formation of, uh, you know, these um, crowdsource, that's the word that I was looking for, these crowdsourced huge information databases and, uh, you know, data parsing and stuff like that was not as as much of a normalized or, uh, you know, regular thing. Like there's like the regular machine to how content is sifted through now, whether you're talking about Pokemon Go or whether you're talking about FF14, people are picking through the data within hours of the download coming down and, you know, taking a lot of the mystery out of this shit. Like, yeah, I, I, it's, it's kind of just hitting me that a lot of this was straight up word of mouth. Oh my God. 
So, so the idea is that if you're a new FF11 player and you finally get the hang of it, is it sort of like a pay it forward kind of thing? Are you expected in that old community to just give out? <laughs> just, you weren't expected to, but you kind of just did. Yeah, like, I mean, that's why link shells were so crucial. Yeah. yeah. Like, it was really, I can't really think of very many people who were just outright unwilling to help new players. Like, they existed, but most people, like, because you had so much downtime anyway. I'm sitting here with my party flag up. I've got nothing else to do. If someone it looks like they're stumbling around or is asking for help, what am I going to do? I'm sitting here on Dragoon LFG for the next six hours anyway. I might as well help. Yeah. So how much time do you think that you guys spent in 11 up till now? Just a oh, guesstimation. Wait, I oh, I uh, actually, my <laughs> final log off, I did a screenshot of my uh, playtime. I can oh, go find it. Jesus. Oh, yeah, my, <laughs> I, yeah I, it's been a while. I mean, I could log in. It, it would take me a, a minute to update. I've, but I've yeah. unsubbed. But... Between all my characters, mine is over two years of logged in game time. Holy yeah, fuck. Literally. Is that two I'm years sure ass and seat? How much, how much time is ass and seat time for that two years? How much is what? Oh, ass and seat time? Yeah. Uh, I did not do any real bizarring overnight or anything like that, so almost all of it. Oh, oh my god! I, mean, I used to leave my character on a lot um, oh. just because I wanted to always be logged in in case I got home and there was an NM up I had to go to. So I didn't log out very much, but I mean, regardless, 100% of my at-home time, even if I wasn't like actively playing, I was sitting there like doing my homework just in case something popped. Oh. Um, so even if I wasn't actually playing, I was most of the time sitting there. Um, I did do some overnight bazaar because, you know, the stupid auction house tax. And so you would just sit out in Rollenberry Fields with crap in your bazaar, hoping people to buy it. Like if you were selling something that was worth like 40 mil, you're not going to put that on the auction house. You lose right, half yeah, the money yeah. on the taxes. Uh, you know, we yeah. got through all the missions. Admittedly, we didn't do too many side quests or anything like that because of, you know, the nature of our show. But uh, And our fucking sanity. Our, our time was 13 days and we thought that that was a no, lot no, no, of time 15 in days. Was it 15 days? Yeah, 15. Okay. 15 days. Uh, Holy yeah. fucking shit. I would say that back in the day, like, because you guys probably got to max level fairly quickly nowadays. Mm. Back in the day, my first job to 75, uh, I reached 75 approximately 20 months after beginning to play the game. And mm. that was probably... Uh, close to 60, 70 days of playtime in that period before I got my first job. Yeah, I, can't, I don't know when I got my first max. I know I was in the level 60s for a long time. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, first level 75, I, you know, we were doing the show when when I did, you know, hit 75 for the first time. So, I mean, you know, you want to talk about, you want to talk about hosting a podcast and not being qualified to do that? Like, we were not... <laughs> There was a lot of us who were not even level 75 when right, we started I found, I found Limit Break Radio. Um, 1,202 days, 12 hours, 11 minutes, and 3 seconds. Oh, wow. Oh, I don't Jesus. even know if I've been alive for that. That's okay. <laughs> that's, that's so 1,202 days, that's, that's more. It's like 365 days in it's a almost year. Almost four that's years. Like almost four years, yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Four more years. Yeah. Okay, was it worth it? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna okay. Let me say it was worth it because my real life husband came out of this game. So oh, okay, I will say right. that that there were plenty Wait. of good things and friends made. I mean, there are friends I made on eleven that I still play fourteen with today. Came out um, of this. There, game. I, I've oh, met nice. all of. I mean, mostly all of them in person now. Um, oh. and it, I mean, there's been so many lifelong friendships and and relationships that have come out of eleven. So in terms of like. The impact on my life, it has definitely been worth it. Yeah, However, when I look back on it, there's so much more that could have been better, that there was so much time wasted in my life Wait, because hey, of this game. What? Hey, Nika, is there anything else major in your life that maybe came out of the, out of FF11? Oh, you mean like, like this podcast? Yeah, yeah maybe like, something you'd like to like mention <laughs> while we're here in front of you. <laughs> just of a little course, thing. I mean, you, guys, you guys are part of the, the, the relationships and friends I made because of this game. Like, if this game didn't exist... I never would have met you guys either. Even though, I mean, all of you went to the same college I did, I don't think we ever would have crossed paths outside of this game. Except I did see Callow perform in a play once when I had no idea who he was. It's pretty... (laughs) Nika. It's pretty pretty remarkable how how the game has, like, brought people together, yeah. Nika, uh, could you tell us the story of how you met your husband? I can. Um, Uh, I would like to hear this. We had a listener who had a similar thing where he he met his wife through FF11. We were like floored, but I I want to hear this, dude. 
All right. So, I mean, the story is, okay, first let me ask. You don't have to be 75 to get in Dynamics, right? No, 65. No, no, it's, okay, it was, so I'm pretty sure yeah. I joined my first Dynamics link show when I was 65. I think that's why I didn't rush to 75 because, like, what was Endgame? I don't know. So I joined a Dynamics link show. I'm pretty sure it was called Death with Honor. I don't know why I remember that. And uh, I was doing Dynamics, and he was also in this Dynamics link show. Um, and we did Dynamics for a long time. And that was when uh, Ventrilo was really becoming like, oh, hey, we have a D- Ventrilo server for our Dynamics link shell. So during Dynamics raids, let's all uh, get on. I was like, okay. So a bunch of us would get on the, the Dynamics Ventrilo. And then after we'd be done, some of us would kind of hang around and talk, even though we weren't talking about the game anymore. We started talking about like real stuff. Um, so over time, there was a group of us, I want to say like six or seven of us, that kind of became closer friends. And so someone else made another Ventrilo server. And this became like our hangout every single day. So like we come home from school. I was in high school this time. Um, we'd come home from school and just get on Ventrilo and just talk, even though we weren't doing Dynamics. And uh, then it came down to me, uh, my husband, and like two of us other friends. And those are the other two that I still uh, play with online to this day. Um, that would just, that we became like, like the, we call ourselves the four fiends. Ha ha. Mm. Um, and we became like this little group that we would just talk every single day, every single day. And it just, after a while, like people, it blew their minds that were like, oh, how do you know these people are really what they say they are? And like, when you talk to these people online every day and you play with them online every day, you, you fi- start to find out like what's true about them and what's, who, who they are in real life behind their character. And so it just kind of grew over time that, uh, that I just realized I had a lot in common with this particular character, this particular elven person in the game. <laughs> Um, and so at the time I had a boyfriend, but he was a real ski, um, and he would break my heart all the time and I would cry and he would, you know, I would cry to him <laughs> on Ventrilo. <laughs> um, and after a while he, he and I broke up and, uh, I was the one who actually said, like we were talking on Yahoo Messenger. Um, and I was like, Hey, you know what? I kind of like you. We kind of have a lot in common. And he's like, what? Why? <laughs> and I'm like... Wow, he, didn't know, he, he didn't know how to respond to any of that. <laughs> and I mean, he didn't know how to respond to, to any of that because he was like, why would somebody like me? Um, and I was like, dude, look, we all have this like same stuff. And so we started like talking and we had so many like awkward conversations before that, like when we would talk about relationships in general. And he's like, I don't do dating because I'd never want to give up my my video games for a girl. And I was like, well, I don't want to give up my video games for a guy either. And then we both had like this awkward silence. <laughs> Okay. Um, and we just kept like, we had like moments like that throughout time. So when I finally said I liked him, we're like, okay, let's, let's do something about this. So we were 17 at the time. Wow. Was he and, horribly um, named when you first met him though? His, his name was Elfie McElfton. Okay. If you guys have read, uh, was it from 8-Bit Theater? I want to say? <laughs> um, there, I think it was that web comic. And um, there was a, a time where like that was an insult someone threw at one of the Elven characters. Elfie McElfton. And he just took that and made it his name. Um, <laughs> So, and yeah, so his name was Winders. Alfie. I called him Alfie. Um, Dynamis Windurst and Yahoo Messenger. God, we're old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was like, and I don't so, think I've talked to a real so, person on Yahoo Messenger in my life. It's always been a Yeah, I mean, we, we used Yahoo Messenger religiously. I think once this whole conversation, when he and I decided we kind of wanted to like meet each other in person, I'm pretty sure I was so enamored by this that I printed out the conversation and I read it over and over and over. Like... <laughs> I remember the next day was like my my school field trip to Cedar Point. And so I'm like, I took it on the bus with me and read it like the entire way there. Like, what the heck is happening in my life right now? So like we tried to like keep this whole thing a secret for a while because we didn't think our parents would let us meet someone we met on the Internet. So we were 17. We hadn't even graduated that's, high school that's yet. Fair. Can't imagine and why. So, um, after, so we did this. That's thing a valid months. concern. That's I mean, a so, valid. Especially because my mom would always like conveniently be like, you know, because, you know, I played these games and talked to people online. So then she would just randomly be like, you know, I saw this thing on the news today about a girl who went and met this guy and she got killed. Okay. Great. And it's like, I haven't, I hadn't even told her yet about him. So I'm like, why does she keep telling me these things? This is so like, how am I going to tell her about? This? Oh, my God. I saw this story today about this girl named Nika who plays Final Fantasy 11 <laughs> and she went and met this guy and she got killed. What yeah. a coincidence, yeah, right? Yeah, I know, right? Um, <laughs> That's was, you, right? Ridiculous. And so after a while, like, he and I were just, like, talking and to know each other. And after a while, I just, like, brought it up to my dad. and like, you know, I've been talking to these people online. There's this guy. kind of really like him. And then my dad's like, so you're almost 18. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, you're almost 18. I mean, you're an adult. I'm like, yeah. What? And, like, he was so cool with it. And it, was, it was, like, blew my mind. So then we finally came clean. 
And I uh, decided we wanted to meet, but my parents were like, no, get some college under your belt first. So like that Thanksgiving. So we decided this was in June when we like, like, okay, we like each other. So then that Thanksgiving, they wouldn't let me fly to him. He had to fly to me. He came for two days and we clicked. And so for the next five and a half fucking years, we did a long distance relationship where I would fly to him or he would fly to me on every break we had from college. And then after I graduated, I moved to the DC area and we got engaged. And now we're married. We've been married for four years. Wow, so. that's crazy. So we've been together for 10. Anybody else uh, meet any spouses? <laughs> I uh, take full I credit met- for my best friend meeting her spouse. <laughs> no. Though. Full credit. I met my that's ex awesome. who saddled me with about uh, $8,000 worth of debt. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> my roommate in college um, was a big Disney fan. And didn't really play much video games other than that. So when we became roommates, she um, saw me playing FF11, and then she heard of Kingdom Hearts, and she's like, "Oh my god, it's like what you play and what I love put together." Yeah, and you're like, she's like Kingdom fuck? Hearts, fell in love with it, and then she started playing Eleven and met her husband there too. So I take full credit. Oh, so how she about we talk about all the relationships that FF11 has ruined? Okay, all right, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun topic. There you go. That would oh be about all of mine actually uh, until the one I'm in now. So. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, I I don't know. I don't know. It definitely like <laughs> FF11 had definitely put a strain on mine. I had a uh, I had a 10-year relationship that ran through most of the running of the 11 version of uh Limit Break Radio. And uh it got to a point where like if I was going to log on, I knew that it was going to spark a fight. Like I would have to like sn- like sneak log on when she wasn't lo- around, you know, like, or, you know what I mean? Like it was, uh, it was bad. It was not, it was not a fun time in my life. And, uh, I mean, my yeah. first boyfriend too hated that I played it so much. Like when I had like yeah. 300 days logged, he was like, that's a whole year of your fucking life gone to that game. And I'm like, it's, it's I love it though. I'm like, it's not wasted. The only games he would play was like Sim City because he liked to build towns and stuff. That was the one he wanted to do for his life. Wait, I was like, wait. Okay, he was giving but, you crap over wasting time in the games and he was playing Sim but games. Because he wanted to be like yeah. a city planner. He wanted to be like a city planner. Oh, yeah. He wanted to be a city and, emperor. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Pre- I mean, and whatever, summon Godzilla. That was the only he played. And I, I finally city got him to play FF7. Training. I did get him to play yeah. FF7, but he never finished it. But like he would he would bitch at me all the time about playing it. And so he would try to like get me to come over so I wouldn't be stuck playing it all the time. And it made me so mad. Well, so. you can go to college for civil architecture or you can play SimCity on the hardest difficulty. I feel like there's a <laughs> there's an easy choice here. <laughs> he made a lot out of himself, though. Like he's doing very well. But regardless, like it was really annoying at the time when I was like 14. And I'm like, I just want to play my fucking game. Stop yelling at me. All right. So what kind of what classes did you guys play? And what was your uh, favorite class from Final Fantasy 11? Um, the only thing I ever played is Dark Knight, so... Okay. Yeah, Dark Knight, all the way. Uh, Why I level anything else? Basically any pet job, uh, Dragoon, Beastmaster, Summoner, were my mains. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, I threw up on my mouth a little bit. Uh, what were you doing? Yeah. Uh, I started off as Red Mage, aka the best mage, until they made it not good anymore. And then I became the best tank, aka Ninja, until they made that not good anymore. And then I stopped playing. I don't know. I see. I had a lot of main jobs because I was in a hardcore endgame link shell. And because of that, depending on the situation, I had to know how to play many, many things. So I started off as a red mage. And so I did get cast as that a lot of the time. Um, That was my first job. I guess it was kind of my main job. But I also would play summoner a lot because, you know, just using Garuda and then putting her away was like the biggest way to kill things like Tiamat and Nidhogg. Um, And... But then I also, um, my favorite jobs were Samurai and the Paladin. Um, but because I was in like the Link Shell that had the number one player on the auction house, for some reason, I don't know why, but all like endgame Link Shell leaders were Paladins with Aegis and Excalibur. Every endgame leader was a Paladin with Relics. And because of that, anyone else who wanted to be a Paladin never got to be one. Um, I got to tank Chimera once, and I got to tank Ixion for five minutes until our better Paladin could get there. <laughs> so uh, I mean, that's the most I got to use Paladin in that game. Um, some things never change. But, I see. But then uh, I would play Samurai during any kind of like DPS party. That I did. So uh, I, I would like to kind of ask, you know, what 
what is FF11 to you now? I mean, I heard, I, it's because someone told me to go check it out. I heard your guys' um, FF11, most recent FF11 Limit Break Radio thing that you guys did recently. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm wondering sort of like what, what role does the game play in your current life? And when did you decide to hang it up? Was it because of, I mean, hang it up for the majority? I think you guys are uh still kind of going back to it and uh your transition was it a transition into ff14 or you know what was it yeah yeah i think it was um uh, you know because i i had gone back for uh seekers of adeline and played that in the downtime waiting for ff14 2.0 and when it came out and when it was and when 14 ended up being good uh you know i i don't know i i it's not that I lost interest in 11. It's just I couldn't couldn't divide my time between the two of them. Uh, and so I ended up uh, dropping off of uh, uh, 11. And I've gone back a couple of times um, and may go back again. I, I really do want to finish all of the storyline stuff. It's just it's such it's such a huge time sink at this point that I don't know that I'll ever be able to make the time. I'm struggling to make the time for FF14 at the moment. So it's like, you know, if if I can't properly manage my time to be able to play the game that I already host a show about, I'm not sure where I'm going to be able to find the time to, you know, throw more on top of that. So yeah, I uh, I stuck around in eleven for a while. Uh, at one period, I got really burned out on FF fourteen during the two point era. I really was not enjoying it, and so I went back to eleven to and basically just treated it like the amusement park that it is. I played bucket list the game and did everything that I ever wanted to do in in Vanadil. Uh And after that, I felt pretty good about going back to fourteen and making that transition over. Although Nika decided that she wanted to see the whole story. So I helped her through basically the whole run of story missions that she wanted to do. And now I think after we made it through that, I'm, I'm pretty much ready to say my piece with the game. I'll come back when the servers are going down and everyone's <laughs> saying goodbye for the last time. I'll be back for that. But I'm, I'm pretty well at peace with Eleven. I mean, my, my transition out of the game happened when my endgame link shell broke. Um, so I was in... One of the, I mean, I, I, okay, I'm going to humble brag for those of you who claim that I do that all the time. Um, <laughs> I, yes, okay, as right as Juxta rejoins the conversation, welcome to my humble brag, is that I do have um, the world's first <laughs> clear of Pandemonium Warden under my belt. And so, oh, hey, Nika, tell us about your, uh, your so, uh, the no, world's first No, I'm not, I'm not clear. talking about that, no. So basically, oh, you don't want to talk about how you exploited it? <laughs> we did clear it legitimately a third time, so shut up. But and plus, when we killed it the first time, the, uh, play online. It was on our our yeah, link shell it was on play online and said it was very legit. Um, okay, for, yeah. for those of you who are not well versed, people were bitching because when we world cleared it, basically Pandemonium Warden would summon every primal and do a big astro flow and kill everyone all at once. Um, we had everybody log out so that the astro flow wouldn't hit anybody, and then we'd log back in. Um, that was so that broken. <laughs> And granted, we only killed it that way twice before we figured out like a better way to like hide people back in the back tunnel and stuff. And we cleared it legitimately every time after that. But regardless, after that, after that link shell, I mean, we were a really good link shell. We were top tier. And after a while, like the leader quit and it got taken over by the second in command who was wrapped around his girlfriend's finger. And it, the whole link shell started going downhill. And so once the server merges happened, um, and I think I was on Remora and I think they merged onto the Leviathan or something. Um, and the link shell decided that they were going to jump servers and only take like a very, very small amount of pe- like people, like their little leader click with them. <sighs> and, you know, at that point in time, me and my husband were in that link shell, like longer than 90% of the people that were in the link shell still at that point in time. And they didn't take us with them because his girlfriend didn't like us. You guys should have um, just staged a coup and just taken the fucking thing <laughs> over. So, well, but I would never would have had the time to lead a link shell. I didn't know how to do that kind of crap. So because of that, um, once we're like, okay, well, we don't have Endgame, like we're never going to get into a link show that was quite that hardcore ever again. And so we we went and we joined like Tom 2's link shell and we had some friends there, but really we just kind of became like, the, hey, you guys have relics and really strong gear. Come help us do stuff. And we're like, okay. <laughs> and after a while, it became kind of boring. So I slowly started to transition out of it at that point. Um, but when 14 came out, I did still play it because there was that like 
bonus items and stuff if you played both games at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I would play both. I was like, I'm always going to play 11. And I was like, well, 14 is so much. I don't know. I was. I was. I was still playing. I was still playing eleven a lot during FF fourteen one point oh. It wasn't one point oh. Yeah. It wasn't until two point oh came out that I was like, okay, that's like I'm pretty much done. You know what I mean? Like, I I think at that point I actually like stopped paying my subscription. You know what I mean? I I kept my sub active all the way through one point oh and to the release. I think I did too. To- so, yeah. Yeah, and I know that I start like I was trying to finish Wings of the Goddess, and I remember doing the last couple of missions with Tom too. And then for whatever reason, we just kind of stopped, and I had like two missions left. And I was like, I just can't play this game anymore. Fourteen is where all my friends are now. Fourteen is much more fun. So then I unsubbed from eleven at that point. And then, mm-hmm. like you guys said, I did go back um, with Ascalia about a year ago. I was actually just seeing my Facebook memories pop up when I uh, restarted. So it was about a year ago when I resubbed. And I really only resubbed just to finish Wings of the Goddess, Seekers of Adeline, and then to do the rap sequence. I waited until they finally are like, okay, this is the last storyline mission. This is the end. And I was like, I can't end such an iconic chapter of my life without completing the final chapter of the story. So All right. I had Stop to do that, for, especially because, way. you know, it affected, <laughs> shut up. It affected like the in, the entire. I mean, without this game, my life would be one hundred percent different. You know, especially yeah. because I, I'm living where I am and married to who I am because of this game. I, I mean, Limit Break Radio has been a huge part of my life for the past ten. Like, I haven't been out for ten years. Like, so, seven years. like, I mean, so I can't. I mean, I had to finish it, so I finished it, and now I've unsubbed. And like Ascalia said, I probably won't go back until the servers are going down. Yeah. Uh, what or is it you comes guys? Free to play. Is, if it goes free to play. What is you guys' yeah, favorite uh, expansion in the game? Just kind of. Uh, well, yeah, out good. of all of the the main, the main <laughs> ones, which one do you enjoy the most? Or do uh, enjoy? I'm gonna say Treasures of Aragon. I mean, given uh, as a whole, <laughs> when you look at when you look at the content, when you look at um, you know, like when it was the most current piece of content too. Um, man, I just loved I love Treasures so much. Uh. It's kind of it's got to feel weird going through any of that now. Yeah, the because, treasures, especially because they don't have those extra missions where you have to go out and grind um, those like arena looking things. That is just totally taken out of the game. Uh, well, not coins. just that, but I mean, like it's it, it, like uh, uh, uh is like completely empty. Like the, there's not a lot of people that are uh, you know because when that was the most current piece of content that was you know like uh el zabi was like where everyone hung out like that's where all of the people would afk i you know it had the most active auction house you had uh campaign or was it no it wasn't the siege that would happen in you know zone right next door um you know honor Ad Ergon was just this like vibrant city when it was the most current. And then like, you know, I've gone, I, you know, clearly I've gone back since, uh, since then. And like, even during SOA, you'd go there and it was just like, Oh shit. It's a ghost town. There's nothing there. There's no sense that there would ever be anyone there, but these huge, you know, like these huge kind of like hallways that they've constructed the zone in, like it used to, you know, like it serve a ton of people. It was crazy. Um, and, and the content I think was the most innovative then, uh, salvage was, was fascinating. Uh, besieged was a great event that kind of, you know, just everyone could do and you would get a bit of reward out of when, you know, just a little bit of XP was still a fairly decent reward. Um, you know, it, it, it was just, I don't know, man. Uh, you know, assaults were uh, a, a great, uh, a, a great little like small party uh, uh, event that you could do. Um, great. Yeah, I, I, assaults were just uh, some of the tightest design content I think that uh, that they had ever put out because you had varying objectives. It wasn't always just go in and murder things. Like sometimes it was breaking down rock walls and stuff like that. Uh, Nigel Isle was uh, one of the greatest 
dungeon climbs ever like uh, between uh the the loot spacing and uh how how good and relevant the loot rewards were uh the design of uh of uh, of all the stuff like i just it, it, everything was awesome about uh treasures of otter gun and i i just i i really enjoyed that expansion juxtaposition uh, how about you what expansion or what piece of content do you like most in ff11 uh, well, my favorite expansion is going to be a bit of a heel turn from basically everyone who's played Final Fantasy XI in that my favorite was Abyssia because Get it was out of the, here. it was it was because that was at that no, time I when, I, when I actually started uh, uh, doing quote unquote end game in Abyssia and I started uh, went with Oh My Kitty's uh, Link Shell covered in bees and I actually eventually started leading the runs there so. Uh, it was in that regard that uh, Abyssia was my favorite content because it actually kept me engaged in the game and uh, made me a better player overall. And that's why I turned into Ninja. Okay, that's fair. All right, what about you, Nico? What was your favorite? Well, I, I have to split it into two reasons for favorites. Like, uh, Treasures it's of Otagon is my H&M's favorite. favorite. Otagon is my yeah, favorite. She, uh, of... she just loves camping those H&Ms. God damn. Chunders of Otter is my favorite in terms of content, like for all the reasons that Aniro said. But um, in terms of story, I can't uh, say that anything tops Chains of Primafia. Mm, uh, yeah, we've heard that a lot. That, yeah. yeah, that one was my absolute favorite. And I, I feel like that they're, like, the characters were just so compelling. I mean, and not to mention it was also like very long because the gameplay had all the stupid level caps and crap at the time, where like it would take you forever to get through everything. So I just had a lot of experiences in general going through the story and going through the missions to get to see um, and just even like build, building relationships with people. I remember just going on certain ventrilo servers as like, I actually led a COP link shell for a while. You had to have a link shell just to get through the COP missions. Like it wasn't a C link shell. It was a COP link shell. Because, and we would do events and t- so that we would all team up in like the, the small parties and get through the events together. And then when and someone would win and the rest of us would lose, we would like rotate people in and out to help each other. So it was... It, it was definitely quite the experience, and the the story I think is is really good from COP. So nice, that's yeah. well, I think I guess we're all different then, because my favorite one was Wings of the Goddess. Uh, I agree with you, Escalia. Yeah, oh, I, oh, oh. Oh, you can't be Lily. She's my bae. Uh, I listen. I loved the whole story behind the Crystal War and basically the kind of setting that formed Vanadil. So I really enjoyed Wings of the Goddess, allowing mm-hmm. us to go back and kind of experience what led to Vanadil being the way it was, even though it was, of course, being screwed with. Uh, between that and uh, like Aniro said, with Besieged campaign, kind of expanded on the Besieged system and made gaining XP and leveling up possible in more ways than just looking for a party. Uh, that was really cool. And the, I, the, the weakness of Wings of the Goddess is that no real good endgame content came out of it. But I wasn't big into endgame at that point, and people just still did TOAU endgame. So f- just as an expansion and what it added to the game from a lore perspective, I really liked Wings. And yeah, we all know it's because of Mayakov. Come on. Because of yeah. Yeah. Mayakov. Yeah. <laughs> the deal with the list. <laughs> That's a good working theory, especially for him. <laughs> yeah. Wings is great from a lore perspective, but... What bothered me about Wings is that they literally just reused every zone and just made it darker. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was lame. Oh, Jesus. I mean, there were three new zones, like Grauberg and whatever. Going else, back like, and getting the really books weird. again, I was like, fuck, dude, I already did this and it already took me forever. Yeah, <laughs> that, 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 uh, Wings of the Goddess was the first expansion that started the sort of troubling trend of uh, Square Enix starting to reuse assets for, uh, for stuff. And uh, it it just it continued with Abyssia, and then like there wasn't any new assets until what was it? Seekers. Seekers. Yeah, it was Seekers, and then like even then it was sort of like that. And honestly, I gotta I gotta give Square Enix credit there, like a, a very clever like remixing of other you know uh various pieces of uh of content from other places sort of a mishmash of everything thrown together and um you know i, I don't i i know a lot of that was driven by the PlayStation 2 limitations ha 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 i know such that joke 
such a punchline. But I, I mean, you know, honestly, like we actually just had this conversation, if you can call it that, over on Limit Break Radio about the PlayStation 3 and, uh, you know, Final Fantasy 14 deciding to drop the PlayStation 3 support. It's thank God that it came so quickly and that it's come so aggressively from Square Enix. They were saddled with that Sony deal for a long, long time, far longer than than you know the game deserved. Like that game deserved to have so many of the quality of life improvements that it has now that it couldn't have. Uh, you know, for so long and it's, and it's unfortunate because now they've sort of missed the boat and they, you know, like they made the content that they could, but like, imagine if they could make an expansion now without having the restriction of the PlayStation two. I think it would be awesome. I think it, or it could be awesome at least. Um, but they, you know, they had to reuse uh, a lot of these big maps and stuff like that because, data space was limited space was hugely limited um and uh and and yeah so uh it's it's unfortunate that we didn't have Kahlo here because i know what Kahlo's answer to his favorite expansion would have been was uh chains of promathia and a lot of that had to do with the narrative behind the main story of uh of that expansion can't really expand on it other than that but just you know for the record, I can say playing all the stuff in a row as we did, um, if there was like a huge difference in quality of both the areas and in the story of, you know, Rise of the Xylar versus Chains of Promathia, everything we, we looked at FF 11 when we, the first two months that we played it, when we yeah. played the, and it was ass talk missions. We were like, it's, there's fucking no music. We're always out here in the desert yeah. and it's really boring looking. And then Chains of Promathia, I think turned it around. And I think what's good about FF 11 is that it kept on that track for the most part. Yeah. Um, every expansion got kind of more intriguing and at least a, a visual sense. And it was, different and it was it was very cool um i want to ask one last question and um that is sort of like what is your what is your goodbye to ff11 what are you um what are you thankful for what you know what ff11 brought into your life what do you hate about ff11 what what do you think it's worth new players joining in? Like, yeah. What is your final let's, sort of send off to FF? Let's make it kind of a call to arms too, because there are a lot of final fantasy fans out there that do not play or have not played final fantasy 11. I mean, what about it makes it good enough for them to play, even though it's the MMO and, uh, it's funny because a lot doesn't of our count. listeners, a lot of our listeners are like, oh, it's the MMO. It doesn't count. And then they play 14 and they play 14 for like 700 fucking days of their life. And like, <laughs> oh, I thought it didn't fucking count. Oh, what happened to that? <laughs> so uh, what would you guys say to that? Like, what is, you know, the big reason to play 11? Why it's important? What, what do you guys think? I think like if I was just going to say goodbye to 11, I think I would start with saying thank you for changing me as a person. Um, I was a very shy, uh, self-contained person before I got into 11. I had no interest in performing. I had no interest in ever being on a microphone talking to anybody or much less talking to someone face-to-face. Uh, and now here I am trying to make my living as a performer. So that is all 100% due to FF11 and eventually Limit Break Radio. So I would say thank you for that. If there's, a, if there's people out there who haven't played 11 – you guys can probably attest it's not that hard there's probably a good learning curve right at the beginning but it's not very hard to get through the game at this point it's definitely worth doing the story is compelling go check it out i I still highly recommend it to this day but don't go thinking that you're going to get the social life-changing experience that i think a lot of us got 10 years ago unless you start a podcast and have a bunch of listeners and get to meet them on your you way. know what? If you can start, if you can start a podcast today about FF11 and make it <laughs> yeah. successful, I would love to props, see that. <laughs> then props to you. Yeah. You're an amazing entertainer. Well, yeah, done. you have you have far more talent than we ever did. Holy shit! Absolutely. Like, yeah. Um, man, I, I don't know. I you know, I, my I guess my send off to to FF11 is that um, you know it, that was a world that had really captured my imagination. And it may have been the last game world that had absorbed me in that in that way 
that maybe only it, it maybe only it ever happens when you're a kid, but and and it might be a holdover from that, but it really did capture my imagination where I would be sitting around in class and thinking about what I wanted to do on FF11 that night. Uh, there's there are very few games that that capture me on that level anymore. And I don't know if that's just part of me being cynical or if that was just something special about that game. But, you know, Von Adil was a world that didn't revolve around the player. And from a narrative standpoint, there were some really interesting decisions that had to be made. And Square Enix made some, you know, they just made some fascinating decisions. And if you're a fan of Final Fantasy and if you're a fan of MMOs, it's definitely worth at least a little bit of your time. All right. How about, uh, gonna, go ahead, Nika. I'm going to be the cynic here. I'm pretty sure. Like okay. anyone who watched me and Ascalia play knows that every step of the way, I'm like, why am I playing this game? I hate this game. So much. Uh, that sounds um, familiar. I will say that during its prime, during its prime, FF 11 was great. And I think that if you could go back in time about seven years and play, do it. But I don't <laughs> think that anyone could do that. So I'm going to say it's very hard as a new player now, unless you have a very specific goal in mind. Like if you know, I'm going to play it and I'm going to, beat the story or I'm going to play it because I have friends that can actually help me that are still playing. If you log in as if you go to the store or, or like online store, like, Oh, Hey, I, well, here's FF 11 for five bucks or whatever. I'm going to, I'm going to try this and you go in. I don't think you're going to get very far. Like you, you need to know why you're playing and what you're doing, or you'll probably get really overwhelmed really quickly. And also, I don't know. It's, just, it's I don't think it's a very fun game anymore. <laughs> um, but I, I will say as a farewell that because of the way that the game used to be, because it kind of gave me that other world. It gave me these friendships and relationships, the skills I have. Like it has legitimately changed my life. I like, I think if this game didn't exist, like I would be a totally different person. I can't even imagine what my life would be like right now if I had never played it. So, I mean, I'm very grateful and thankful to it for all of that. However, I'm going to say that unless you have friends that play, don't play it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to... Actually, I'm going to side with Nika for like the first time ever, I think. Um, oh, wow. Who are you and what are you done with Juxta? Yeah, right? <laughs> right? Look, uh, apparently Nika can make a, a good point every once in a while. So Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but but no, like, um, I'm going to be the dissenter here and say that the stories in Final Fantasy XI are really not that great. They're very, very wordy. And they're, to me, Long I don't feel and drawn like out. Yeah, there's just too much. So text. long. Well, so, I, I, I mean, Seekers is. I don't know about Seekers of Adeline is the worst until the last like five missions. Yeah. No, I, even that, like even uh, like COPs. I was watching those through YouTube, and oh my gosh, and uh, Zillart like characters just arrive and appear out of nowhere, and it's like, what's going on? But Zillart um, wasn't very well written. No, neither. I don't think these COPs was either. What? But um, Them's no, but words. to go to go along with that. Um, Final Fantasy XI also has my life's biggest regret in that I didn't start playing it right when it came out. I started playing in Treasures of, Treasures of Ot Ergon, and if I could redo my entire life with hindsight, I would definitely play Final Fantasy XI right when it came out, because I feel like uh, not playing it right when it came out just really didn't give me the perspective that I wish I had on the game as a whole. So, so, I don't, I'm going to I'm going to try to say this or ask this as delicately as I can. Um, <laughs> you deliver pizzas. Not playing 11 at, at launch is your life's biggest regret. <laughs> 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 OK, I'm going to retort with um, just saying that I live in a house with a room. Where are you currently living in Escalia? <laughs> All right. You win. <laughs> uh, but seriously, it is my biggest regret because because of 11, it has shaped my life so much, just like a sky. Like I'm normally like a really shy, awkward person that doesn't talk at all ever. And because of Final Fantasy 11 and subsequently because of Limit Break Radio, I actually have confidence now and I talk to people and I realize that I'm actually a lot better than most of the world combined. So it's really <laughs> nice to know that. Yeah, I feel the same way. Yeah. yeah. That you know, that's I think that's the big thank you that uh that 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 we're all sort of working towards is you know, to to thank 
collectively the Final Fantasy XI community for allowing us and giving us the vehicle to be silly, to be dumb, to be, uh, you know, irreverent, to, uh, you know, and they and they put up with our jokes. They put up with our dumb dick jokes and, uh, you know, our, our, our stupid radio show and really empower us to be able to do a lot more than just what we've done with Limit Break Radio. And that's really cool. Um, you know, the fact that, uh, it, you know, the fact that we could find an audience at all, uh, is, is pretty amazing because what we do is, I don't know, it's, it's like, you know, it's, it's like old radio that doesn't exist anymore. And, uh, you know, the, the, the fact that you guys kind of allow us, uh, you know, that, that we were allowed to do that, that, uh, you know, we gained an audience doing any of that shit is, uh, you know, is, is awesome and hilarious. And, uh, you know, it's, it's helped bring, uh, you know, four awesome people that I know, uh, you know, out to, uh, you know, to be introduced to, uh, the, the masses. And, uh, that's, that's really, that's really fucking cool that, you know, people have gotten to know each one of these, each one of these, uh, these folks that do the show with me. And, uh, how much, you know, they each bring to the table. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's really cool, uh, to, to, to be involved with something like that and to have a community that has allowed us to, uh, act like idiots weekly. Yeah. It's Uh, amazing what these people will let us get away with, isn't it? (laughs) It really is. I'll I'll say something. I'll be like, fuck dude, I should not have said that. Like I, we're not going to, people are going to fucking jump ship. It's all over. It does happen occasionally. Sure. There are some times where I'm like, okay, we got to sever this tie, but rarely, you know, it's like, I told, I told a Reddit commenter to go get Hulk AIDS and I still have people that (laughs) listen to me on a weekly basis for some fucking reason. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts, um, man. <laughs> it, it, no, like, the, the people, uh, you know, people get the joke. People understand what, you know, people understand the bit. And, like, that's, I think that's, that's really cool to have an audience that's receptive. And, and also, like, this has been, like, not the, I mean, like, it's been hugely informative for me in my career as well. You know what I mean? Like to, to have an audience that you understand sort of like what triggers them. You sort of understand like, you know, what, what, uh, you know, what they like, what they don't like. And to be able to fuck with that expectation, like it teaches me a lot about audiences in general and being a radio producer. That's a really important thing to understand and to know where the line is and to you know not just dance right up to that line but to sometimes boldly cross it and go fuck you if you've got a problem and that's something honestly and i'm and i mean i know i've taken kind of this in a bunch of weird directions but honestly i think that that's something that is missing from media in general these days is that there's not a willingness to really, you know, just sort of, um, you know, dig your heels in and go, you know, fuck you. If you've got a fucking problem, uh, with, with what I'm saying, let's have a discussion about it instead of, well, you can block me if you want, you know, like that seems to be the answer these days. And I'm much more interested in having a, uh, you know, having a conversation about difficult things and Final Fantasy Online, both 11 and 14, have really allowed me to do that and have informed how that process happens. So fair enough. All right. One more huge, uh, one more thing I want to I want to ask. All right. So oh, during- real quick, real quick, before you ask that question, I want to say, uh, uh, Aniro, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly about the uh, the you know, the what what podcasting in general lets us do is have these discussions very openly. Uh, we've even had like, uh, and we probably shouldn't have them on the air, but we've had like political discussions before. Oh yeah, on some of our shows, and for us, it's almost therapeutic. And you know, oddly enough, like our audience trusts us enough, even if we don't agree with them 
on certain things. Like it's all part of a larger discussion. It's all, it's, right. it's what podcasting is all about. It's something that, yeah, like you're saying, you don't get that, yeah. uh, from radio anymore. And you don't really get well, that. Don't. Uh, you don't YouTube. get that on YouTube or BuzzFeed videos or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, I mean, uh, they have all these, uh, you know, these people that are paying them. You know, we've got people in the media that yeah. are paid off by certain individuals. And us, of course, we don't make jack doing this. <laughs> so we can say whatever the fuck we want, right? And that's, I think, why Every, it's... Everything, uh, everything sort of exists in this own little, like, bubbled-in existence. And if you don't agree with someone, then, you know, you can just, you know, you can just hit the block button and you don't have to hear them anymore. And you can only hear people that always agree with you and that's really dangerous like i think that there is something to be said in having an open dialogue even if it's a fucking difficult one even if you don't agree and i've i've long said i've long taken the position that you know look you don't have to agree with the things that i say to continue to listen and uh enjoy the show like agreeing with me is not a precondition of us uh, of, of how we do the show. That's why we don't ban people from our chat rooms. That's why we openly read and address criticism on the show on a regular basis. That's why, you know, when we stream, we, uh, you know, we don't shy away from trolls. We fucking, we say, bring it the fuck on, man. Like that's a whole part of the program because like that shit doesn't exist. And I'm so tired of hearing like, well, just black me if you don't agree. No, have a conversation with me if you don't agree we have lines we have we have uh open lines on all the shows that we do we allow callers on every moment of every show that we do and fuck it you know you want to have a discussion let's call uh, you know call the show let's have a discussion don't sit and snipe me with fucking twitter comments or fucking youtube comments that's Pussy shit. I'm so tired of hearing <laughs> that. I'm so tired of having to, to, and, and, to, and, and, and people feeling like that's like the justifiable way or like that's the appropriate way to express themselves when we have open fucking phone lines for three hours every Sunday and then for another two hours when we do our other show. So it's like, dude, if you want to have a conversation about the way that we program our show or the shit that we say on our show, fucking call us out and like, let's have the actual discussion because that's what I'm interested in having. And I'm fucking, I'm, I'm so, I'm so done with, with dealing with fucking shitty comments and people thinking that that's the way, that's the appropriate way that I should be engaging them by spending my time writing paragraphs of bullshit that I could say in five minutes on my show. Fuck that, man. And, 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 and it's so funny when you call them out, they're like, well, I didn't expect to have my shitty comment read on your show. Well, you probably should have thought about that before you left it. Uh, and and if you don't want to be fucking flamed on the show, and if you think that that's offensive, and if I've bruised your fucking safe space, well, then guess what? You're you're posting publicly on the internet. I'm not having to dig through shit to find the shit that you're posting. For fuck's sake, like have some responsibility and accountability behind the things that you fucking say. And, 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 and if you want to hold me accountable for anything that I say or anything that I've ever said, fucking call me. The number is on the screen every Sunday. God damn. <laughs> wow, man. Sorry. <laughs> Struck a nerve there. What did I tell you about giving a Nero a soapbox back? I told you to hang on to it. I told you to hide it. <laughs> All right. One last thing. Favorite booty call. Final Fantasy XI features a lot of... Uh, heroines um as far as each expansion there's always a main chick who i felt like i was getting it on with the entire time you know the way they were talking to me the way they were like oh el husk i have these odd feelings about you and i'm like oh baby i know uh which Can one of these minutes for nika to talk about this because she's not <laughs> i have like 12 bays in this universe yeah <laughs> <laughs> and they're they're pretty much different timelines so they don't have to know about each other oh wow well, oh. you don't even know <laughs> Don't even know. <laughs> Big fan of wings. Big fan of Can wings. Wings continue to not know because that's really what I want. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah, my favorite, I'm okay my with favorite that. ending though is the last time I logged off of Eleven. I summoned all of their trusts and I took a big screenshot and it was magical. 
Oh, All nice. right, Nika, we've, we've been asked now, this isn't just like LBR or one of our streams, we've been asked by another show, Number One Bay. No, ifs, Oh my god, ifs, I can't pick just one. Number, one. number one, who is it? You, you are alone <laughs> on an island forever with one of them. Who is it going to be? See, I have to pick one girl and one guy. No, 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 no. No, you no, no it's got to be one. I can't pick one. Okay, you guys pick, I'll come, come back to me. Okay. Okay, well, I got dibs on Lilith's set because she's the hottest and I tapped that. <laughs> yeah, I got you there. All right. Lilith's set for Juxta. The scallion. Um, go, go ahead and give me Almia. She can sing. All right. Yeah, there you go. What? Sing me a song, baby. <laughs> the, the nun? nun? <laughs> Gotta have... The nun? They're Almia freaks, man. Totally a nun. Almia was great. <laughs> yeah, she's not putting out. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Five years on an island alone, she will. Yeah, yeah we'll see about that. <laughs> yeah, okay, you got five years. I'm going to be in Lilith's pants in, like, you know, a couple hours, if that. That's like 15, <laughs> dude. Yeah, d- seriously? Like, I-, I mean, you could have gone creepier and said Prish, but that's pretty creepy. <laughs> Prish well, is like 100 years old. Lilith. That's not creepy. Prish is old. Yeah, it's... Oh, oh no, and, it's creepy. <laughs> and the body of an 11 year old yeah. dear god <laughs> yeah also That's the also thing, an era's case. <laughs> all, all of all of the fucking uh all of the the like quote-unquote eye candy i find really creepy i'm not i'm not a fan of any of them uh who was the uh the the bestoken uh samurai chick ayame yeah yeah, 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 yeah. i'll go with her I'll go she with her. Pretty oh my god, she's, she's, awesome. she's, a, she's a total badass. I can't just pick one. This is the hardest thing ever. Oh my, <laughs> oh my god. god. Oh no, because oh my gosh, I think. I'm picking no, for you. you don't I can't pick. pick one. Um. Okay. No, Lilisette was the one I cried over the most. So Lilisette. probably her. But you can't you can't forget about Aldo. No, she said Lilisette. You can't she forget said about Lilisette. you can't forget about um Villanelle from the past and his sweet, sexy Elvin Paladin self. Clearly you you're forgetting about him. You're leaving him you're leaving him to go stay with the Island you, Lilisette. But you have to admit though that <laughs> the game the game it's okay, I've already told you I love to like live with Lilisette in that like world between worlds in between her world and our world. I've already that already happened. Um but the that the, the game canonly ships you with Arciella at the end of Adeline. Like they absolutely one hundred percent. Like she's supposed to be like your love interest. Yeah, she's and she was pretty cool too, I guess. Spoilers. Those are good days. I'm a big fan of Lion, personally. Yeah. Surprise oh my god, Lion, Lion too. Yeah, oh! <laughs> I want to cosplay her. Like she's one of my top cosplay priorities. Well, well Lion going with Lion, Nick, it would avoid a weird uh weird triangle, love triangle between you, her, and Juxta. I mean, yeah, that I mean, might be something to consider. Well, I want to. Me and Lilith have already like, <laughs> teleported to that world between our worlds, and we've been living there since I've logged off the game. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Well, thank I you, you thank you so much, guys. Um, so, whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold on. What's uh, we got to hear yours is guys's. I said lion. Schweiss, I think okay. yours was also what was it, Little Set? Well, yeah, but I'm getting called a fucking rapo here for doing Little Set, but yeah, I'll do Little Set. Yeah, it's creepy. It's creepy. <laughs> Look, <laughs> man, I'm young. It's creepy. I'm a strapping young she, lad. No, it is. No way that she's not at least 18. <sighs> yeah. Are we really? Were we having? Well, this I discussion? mean, she was 18 <laughs> in like what 2008, 2009. I mean, time time flies, right? There you go. They age. Yeah. I mean, we gotta get if Japanese anime. midnight is a thing, then yeah. I mean, everybody is, yeah, yeah. I don't know, reaching middle age almost. Yeah, yeah I like Little Set a lot. I liked, uh, I liked all of them though. I thought they were all really cool characters at the very least. I mean, I wasn't always like, oh yeah, for every one of them, you know. But uh, I did enjoy Nash Miria from Treasures of Ottergon a lot. I thought it was cool that she was uh, running the running the show for a long time, and I, I enjoy she was kind of meek. Though. Yeah, I, I, well, I mean, you know, it's kind have of, a lot of. Strength of personality. Yeah, and her trust is terrible. That. I like to. I like She's to. Massive. Yeah, you know, overpower people. You know. It's... Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna. Go, I gotta change mine. I'm changing mine to Naja Salahim. <laughs> oh wow. Naja, oh. she would. What? Naja is gonna like Naja's stomp like... on your nuts, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Naja's, Naja's, that's what I like. <laughs> Naja's one hundred percent into penile insertion. Just say it. One hundred percent. 
I, yeah. Nausea was an awesome character. She's in insane. Space. Yeah. As long as she doesn't do it with the mace, whatever. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm down. That's what she would use. You know that's what she, you would have a urethra that looked like an <laughs> asshole. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> would be the yeah, first person to gape your urethra. Oh, <laughs> Jesus fucking Don't God. say that. Oh, that was that's the last fun. time we were that's invited fun. onto the show. <laughs> yeah. Listen, listen, men's rights is a real serious issue, oh. and gaping penile cavity is, is very offensive. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Woo. Well, thank you guys for coming on to our show. Uh, you said welcome to a discussion with our, LPR. Our, you invited us here. You our said LPR. Us like limit break radio. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on to our show. Um, Nero, Escalia, Juxtaposition, and Nika. Thank you so much. Uh, it was very great to hear all your stories about Final Fantasy XI and getting a totally different perspective on the game. Uh, You know, and um, I'll allow you guys to do some plugs about uh, LBR. Um, It's every Sunday, right? That is correct, yes. Every Sunday, starting at 1 p.m. over at twitch.tv slash Limit Break Radio. Yes, that's Eastern. Uh, and uh, it's a three-hour talk show about Final Fantasy XIV, but it's about more than Final Fantasy XIV. It's also about penis gaping. So you should join us <laughs> Sundays at 1 p.m. Twitch.tv slash Limit Break Radio, LimitBreakRadio.com for full full archive of our show. Uh, you can also check out Final Encounter Cast, which is our show not just about Final Fantasy, not just about Final Fantasy XIV, it is about all video games in the video game Mother industry. <laughs> Check that out over at FinalEncounterCast.com. And that's also Sundays at 5 at uh, twitch.tv slash FinalEncounterCast. And also Friday, December the 9th, please tune in at twitch.tv slash Limit Break Radio for Seeds of Acceptance to Earthbound. We're going to be doing a marathon charity stream of Earthbound uh, with all proceeds going to Go Affirmations, a wonderful LGBT charity right here in Michigan. All donations during that stream will be going to charity, and we're going to be playing Earthbound start to finish, come hell or high water. That's awesome. So December 9th for that. Okay. December the 9th at 5 p.m. All right. Thank you, guys. So once again, a big thank you to Limit Break Radio for coming on and talking about FF11. Uh, as a as another goodbye to FF11, we do have a couple forum posts, and then we do have some uh, listener sent in audio that we will play after this and and sort of wrap up the show from there. So on our forums, we did have um, Shinru and Felicia Nomiko um, talk about FF11 a little bit. Shinru says, I'm a little sad you were not playing Abyssia because you could then do the famous Shinru boss fight talking about us playing FF11. Says he (laughs) played it back on the PC and then tried it on PS2 and 360 and never got far, only played a little. Only played... A little, and he said, "Isn't the FF11 music great?" And I say, uh, "Many times the FF11 yeah. music is great." Of course, it's uh, the last last Nobu Uematsu score. Uh, as far as uh, yeah, he did do a big chunk. Uh, he's done other little things in the series past then, but yeah, well, I mean, as series. as a main composer, yeah, yeah. Uh, Felicia Nomuko says, um, "I would say some of the music is great, more than half of it anyway." But I got bored of with it after a while, which. Almost always happens to me in MMOs, and I mute the mu- music and play on my own. And I did that many times too, as well. Yeah, I remember Felicia having to like, go. Joe, your music's too loud. I hate you. I'm going to get kicked off of Twitch, Joe. So before we play our uh, final little bits of audio from some listeners, um, many of you guys will know these listeners because they're fo- <laughs> they're featured they're awesome. on our show all the time, and they're very awesome. Uh, real quick before then. You know, I just want to say about my FF11 experience, I don't think without this show I would have ever played FF11. I always wanted to, and I'm glad that I did. I'm glad that I, you know, eventually played this game uh, to my satisfaction uh, all the way through. I would say, to me, this is playing it all the way through. And um, 
I have a lot of memories, but um, it's not so much the game for me. It's more that I got to play it with you listeners, um, about uh, about a half a dozen of you uh, I got to know, and uh, it was really fun, and at least one of you guys, Critital, made it all the way with us, so yep. I'm very glad for, for that lost experience. A of, lost a lot of good men along the way, but <laughs> Critital stayed strong. Men and women, yeah. And uh, followed our orders, and he made it. There you Soldier, go. Soldier, we, we brought him home. Everyone else saving private credit tell is what it was. We don't have any future FF11 episodes planned. And no, no. Um, and I can say that uh, with satisfaction, we did cover the game quite a bit in, in our run so far. So um, for now, from Joe, this is goodbye, FF11. Unless you randomly have some expansion come out, this is goodbye. Yeah, I mean, this is a game that honestly started the very interactive uh, listener base that we have. I mean, this is where we first had a chance to play with um, those people. Uh, we had Shuri, we had Bandrum, we had Krenital, we had uh, Artiforian for a while, we had Darth Jomu. All of these people came together to play Final Fantasy XI with us. It was something that we... I was amazed that we had anybody jump on Final Fantasy yeah, I XI. And I was like, <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work, dude. I'm like, it's just going to be you and me. And then slowly, uh, over the first couple of weeks, we started getting contacted by people saying, hey, oh, hey we're uh, you know, we're listening to your show and we want to play this game with you because we didn't play it. Or we did play it and we want to just play it with you because we're sick. Help us and, out, yeah. yeah <laughs> we want to play it more. And uh, it was just, it was a really great experience. And it carried over to 14, like sevenfold. I mean, we had a ton of people... Uh, compared to 11 playing 14 with us and looking forward to going back to that but like Joe said uh, thanks a lot everybody who has helped make this experience what it is I mean the whole point of an MMO is to play with people namely people you've either you either know already or you get to know over a course of time and I feel like that's exactly what's happened with Bandrum and with Krenital and with Shori and Artiforian even Darth uh, I mean we're I'm on like Felicia a, Nomiko. I'm on like a <laughs> I will talk to you like I've known you for a little while basis with most of these people because of how much time we spent in Final Fantasy XI. Yeah, it's, that's true. It's crazy and it's yeah. awesome and we really do thank you for all the time you dedicated to the game and to playing with us. I mean, Krenital has, has played many a quest multiple <laughs> times for uh, <laughs> Joe and myself and... Bandrum did the same thing a couple times. Yeah, right? and it's we're eternally grateful for this and if... Uh, if you guys ever need us to run through content with you, I will log in and help. I will not because my sub is gone and it's not going to happen. But yeah. good luck to you. Yeah. And there's always the there's always the let's plays on YouTube with the uh, hours and hours of FF11 content with True. us playing. True. Live. Not everything was excellent. So, in a way that could almost be a sort of guide. <laughs> yeah. I've had to not do it for the most part. But, <laughs> there you go. But you'll you'll see the end result. So uh, thank you guys so much for for joining us for this game, uh, this game, and just enhancing the experience that we were able to have. Yeah, let's uh, let's get to those uh, voicemails. Hey guys, the Gaming Agent Cage and the One Nation here. Uh, heard y'all wanted to hear some Final Fantasy Eleven stories. Uh, so I thought I'd share mine. It's not very long. Um, but basically, when I found out that 9, 10, and 11 were like the next games in the series, uh, I got really excited for 11 until I realized it was online only. And at the time, my PS2, I didn't have the hard drive. I didn't have the uh, little connector that you had to put in the back to get internet to it. Um, so I thought I was going to miss out on 11. And eventually, I got around to getting it. On Xbox 360, they had like this, um, I don't, was it the Ultimate? It was either the Ultimate Bonner DL Collection or just the Bonner DL Collection, but it was, I think, a 2011 version of the game. Uh, but uh, decided to pick that up, and I was like really excited. Um, thought I was finally going to get my chance to play Final Fantasy XI. Uh, got on there, took forever to install, forever to update. And uh, at that point, there wasn't like, you know, the, the easier ways to level up. It was a pretty brutal experience. Um, in fact, I spent so much time trying to find ways to level up and get better gear that uh, when I finally made it to the first dungeon, uh, I just got destroyed because I didn't have any friends to play with. All the ones that I wanted to play with were uh, having trouble connecting or just couldn't get the game to properly install. So. 
Uh, I actually, even though I made it all the way to Juano and uh, did Balkram Dunes leveling, I didn't really get a chance to experience 11. Uh, so even though I didn't want to, I just ended up dropping the game. I was like, well, I guess this is it. I'm never going to complete every Final Fantasy. By that point, I'd already finished and completed 12, uh, did all the hunts. Um, I didn't do all the elite marks, but uh, yeah, so I felt like, you know, and 11 was going to be the end. I did pick up 13 and did everything in that, but, you know, there was always that empty hole that I just felt there. And I always wondered about going back and... I just, I never got around to it. And now with the uh, announcement that there may be a mobile phone version, um, you know, I've been kind of holding off thinking, well, I could try to go back now, but a lot of those systems are so outdated and it takes so much time and dedication. And y'all's podcast actually kind of helped me realize that. And even though I don't get as much out of the 11 stuff because I haven't experienced it, I, I don't feel like, you know, I can relate to your your uh, your trip through Vana DL for better or worse. Uh, I actually appreciate these episodes the most recently because of the fact that one, it shows how much dedication y'all have to the series, and two, it, it kind of helped me realize just how much there was in this world that at the time I thought, well, the story must be junk because nobody ever talks about it, and the ones that do talk about Eleven only talk about like all the hard stuff in it. So uh, it's been refreshing. I mean. I'm glad y'all are moving on to some other games so I can feel like, hey, I, I, you know, I can relate back to the podcast again. Um, not that I ever like quit listening or anything, but I'm just really excited, you know, to, to see, you know, what's going to happen from here. And and also, I, I really appreciate y'all going back and going through eleven, especially that it's, you know, probably going to be wrapping up here real soon. I don't know when the servers will shut down or if they'll ever go free to play or anything like that, but. Um, but yeah, because of y'all, I feel like I've at least, you know, experienced some of 11, even though I haven't played that game in forever and probably never will again. So thanks guys. Uh, I hope y'all, you know, look back on this fondly. Um, I'm glad that y'all were able to take me through at least a, a small fraction of on a DL. And, uh, and yeah, here's hoping that if it does come out on cell phone, it'll at least replicate the experience and help us get the full story. Uh, the folks who were just never able to get into it. So, take care, guys. Hope you all enjoy the grind. Hey, guys. It's Curtis all here. Uh, so, I hear you guys are doing a farewell to FF11. So, as you know, I stayed the entire time with you guys. It was rough. It was fun. A little dirty. We got through it. As for remembering things that are of note in Eleven, I remember us getting to the Dark Lord for the first time with our friends uh, Dark Jomu and I think Minzar at the time and Bangdrum and you guys. I feel like I'm missing somebody there. Anyway, um, they were like the best team we had going into that because. We even had to do it, what, twice to get through that? It was, it was awesome. The fight was as big as I was hoping for. It took forever to get to that point, but that fight was worth doing. It was fun. Um, as for the rest of the expansions that we've gone through, I truly enjoyed most of them. The Chains from Matthew fight, one of the best experiences we had for FF11. The entire sequence, memorable, getting to Promathia, having to go through that entire um, um, garden of Rocky Bay, and going through fighting the drone and making that sucker follow us the whole way there. Stop, go, stop, go. That was great. And then Promathia, God, that was, that was a great fight. Um, and then we got into Wings of the Goddess. That, that, was, that was good. Things got us time travel. Mm, probably could do, probably could remember that a little bit better. Um, but meeting uh, Lilith and um, Lilith set at the same time, two opposing characters on uh, opposing different timelines with two completely different personalities. That was fun. And then seeing a Thomas for the first time, that was cool. Kate Sif. 
interesting. Could have had more. Um, overall, good story. And then we're on to um, Secrets of a Duelin. I don't think it was all that memorable, so I'm purposely skipping it. Um, but the Secrets of a Duelin one, I think, is probably the best expansion so far. Even though I was frustrated as much as you guys were with that imprimatur wait time for all those weeks that we had to waste to get through that. Um, but the story and the overall area were probably the most fun I've ever seen and detailed. And I loved meeting all the characters in that story. I feel like it's the best one so far. The final expansion where we all feel we're done was great. And then Swice calls me on the website saying, oh, let's do all the add-ons. And we go back and do that. And it's like, I thought we were done. But... I'm glad we went back and did it because now we can officially say we're done with all the expansions and the story that allowed us to put out. I'm so happy we did that and I'm glad that we got to spend those six months going through all that content. Thanks guys for putting in all that effort and actually putting up with me hounding you to get stuff done and making sure that you have all that stuff done and getting the envy stage with uh, Selene and making sure that we were all prepared for that. But, I remember the Hades fight. Hades fight was awesome. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, like I said, it was it was a wonderful expansion. And the story for all of them was well worth the trip. If anybody goes into 11 after we do this, I'm so happy you're going to do it because the stories for all of them are worth it. All of them are worth doing. They're so fun. Um... As difficult as that campaign is, doing all, all of them, it was worth it. Totally worth it. Thanks for doing a great show. Later. Hey there, folks. It's Pandrum, and I thought I would leave the hosts of Ultima Final Fantasy, Caleb and Joe, with some of my final thoughts on the game that brought us together. The one, the only, Final Fantasy XI. Where to begin? Well, I suppose we begin at the beginning. Some time ago, I checked out that purple microphone button on my phone, and I discovered that which would forever change my life, the podcast. I figured, what the hell? I might as well see what's out there for Final Fantasy. So I searched and checked out one of the shows on a whim, and it was all right. After I listened for a while, I figured I'd look at some of the other shows. That's when I found these two guys, Joe and Caleb, and their humble little show, which at the time was still in its infancy. As I dedicated myself to the UFF school of Final Fantasy, I began to hear tell of the hosts seeking some help in Final Fantasy XI, the mysterious, the unknown, the MMO. At that point, the online Final Fantasy games were the only ones that I had not played, and I knew that my time had come. I went out, bought the game, and spent four goddamn days installing that shit, and then jumped into Vanna DL for my first adventures in an online Final Fantasy game. Now, I had some background in MMOs, and that helped me adjust to the archaic nature of Final Fantasy XI, but that aspect of the game certainly did not detract from my enjoyment. To be honest, it felt familiar. It felt like a home that I had been in before. It felt like Final Fantasy. However, this time, I had people who shared in my passion for the Ultimate Video Game series. I joined the hosts along with Krinitol and Shuri. Together, we explored the lifeless void that was Final Fantasy XI. Many great times were had, iconic battles won, and yet, as our time in the original content waned, I began to realize that I was ready to set this game down. The night we finished the main story of Final Fantasy XI, I canceled my subscription and bid farewell to Bandrum, the Galka Beastmaster, knowing I would someday return to the world of Vanadiel to explore the other stories that awaited him there. Almost a year later, my dreams became troubled. Visions of a familiar world, one in which a new set of expansions awaited my attention, began to creep into my subconscious. So I took a breath, and I spent another entire day installing that patch. As I returned to Vanadiel, I can remember what it was like to step back into Final Fantasy XI. Again, it was familiar. However, this time, I had recently spent some time in Eorzea, if Final Fantasy XIV is that modern, gorgeous game that you play on weekends, getting into all sorts of high-octane trouble, Final Fantasy XI is that old, reliable game that's waiting for you with open arms during those boring weeknights. After a brief learning curve, I got back into it and things were just as I remembered. Al Husk, Nuborius, Krinital, and Shuri 
We all spent many hours shooting the shit while mowing through missions and quests and just steamrolling the expansions. But then, something distracted me. A whisper at the back of my mind that got progressively more and more urgent. That whisper got louder and louder, and ultimately I woke up one day and realized, what the fuck? I've spent over 10 real life days playing this fucking video game. I took a serious look at what I had been doing and realized that the MMO is not the kind of game for me anymore. I will never discount anyone for their love of an online role-playing game. But for this Beastmaster, for Bandrum, I realized that the MMO had lost its grip. Sitting in front of a screen, wasting hours of my life, deluding myself into thinking I was happy with spending that much time in a video game was no longer something I was interested in. That day, I didn't just put down my axe. I put down my controller. So I know I can't bring my thoughts about Final Fantasy XI to a close with such banality. I sincerely enjoyed my time in Vanadiel and Final Fantasy XI. I really did. For fans of the series, I would say that this is definitely a game worth investing some time in. However, don't lose yourself out there. Remember what is important to you and enjoy this series in whatever way you see fit. I know that playing this game didn't diminish my love for the series in any way. Rather, it added to the deep passion that I hold for the Final Fantasy game series. I will always remember my time in Vanadiel and Eorzea with fondness. I have associated that time with some great people. To the hosts of Ultima Final Fantasy, it's been real. I can only speak for myself, and although this warrior of light may not spend any more of his time in an online game, that doesn't mean that Final Fantasy is any less a part of my heart and soul. On behalf of Bandrum, enjoy the grind. Thanks a ton for the voice messages, guys. Those really mean a lot. Um, I'm glad you took the time to give us a call and give us your final thoughts. And uh, we really, we really appreciate it again. And um, yeah, shit. There's not really much else to say. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I guess we can do some plugs. We haven't done that yet. For that's the show, true. So. Yeah. UltimaFinalFantasy.com is where you find everything, guys. And um, maybe we'll see you again in uh, Eorzea. Yeah, soon ish. <laughs> We'll talk to you guys next time. Enjoy the grind. <laughs>